Hello and welcome to part one of a four part tutorial. My name is Iskander Melak and I'll be guiding you through this series of tutorials. We'll be using Fracture Effects along with Maya 2015 to create a look and feel for this art directable shot. So this is the shot, uh, I've just got it on loop at the moment and basically it's the initial impact that we're going to be covering where the meteorite actually hits the ground and pushes all the uh, fractured road into the air. In part one we'll be covering the initial scene setup as well as labelling and organising. Fracture Effects has got some great tools that help you organise your, your simulation and make sure that it's set up in a way that you can pass it on to someone else and they'd be able to find things easily. Okay so we're now in Maya um, and it's quite a simple setup so we've got the meteorite that was hand animated and I've baked it out to keys and then we've got some buildings just set up as GPU cache just to because otherwise it wouldn't move so quickly and then we've got the road geometry that is going to get broken so this is what the outline looks like um, I've tried to keep it as clean as possible because the more you start adding to the actual simulation and if it's named incorrectly or not very well then it gets difficult to actually start navigating even though Fracture's got some brilliant options to help you organise your scene it still helps if you uh, if you actually name things properly in the outliner too so what we're going to do is we're going to be breaking this road here and so let's start off by doing that so if we uh, go up to the Fracture menu you can do it like this or by pressing spacebar and going to break selected and then we need to create a world as well so create a simulator and the simulator should be right down at the bottom of the outliner so you need to select the, the mesh and then the simulator and then go to fracture connect selection to simulator so once you've done that you should now get a uh, FX world one node and you can see it's named correctly in the objects list so just make this a bit bigger because so, there's going to be quite a few objects in there so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add these in here as well and a really cool feature of Fracture Effects which was what I was mentioning about keeping things organised is you can select all of these right click and create group so I'm now going to call this road group. I'm going to make sure that um, it's not the group that I create here is not the same as the group name here just in case anything breaks further down the line which it probably won't but it's always good to have unique names so um, I'm going to select all of these and these and these I'm only going to select solver one uh, solver 2 is for a future tutorial where basically um, we add a second solver to this particular shot so I'm going to get all of these items and I'm going to go through and name all of these been lazy in copying uh, the name and then just deleting the items that I don't need so there we go they're all nice and tidy and named okay so we've now gone through the initial Miocene setup and labeling and organizing using fracture effects we'll now start setting up the initial simulation and the initial settings using fracture effects so let's just open them all again because I'm going to start adding setting up fracture now basically so uh, this main road uh, mesh the fractured the road that's being fractured needs to be set to uh, paint localized. I'm going to set some initial settings here which I've used previously that seem to get the look that I'm after so I'm going to change this to 5000 
I'm going to put this down to zero because I don't want it to move unless unless it needs to, like when it's broken. Uh, leaf friction at the moment. Um, actually, no, sorry, I'm going to set that to 0 0.6. Put a little bit of linear damping on. It's a random number because that's what I used previously. And everything else is going to stay the same. Uh, if I select the rest of the items, uh, they're all going to be. I'm going to untick active and I'm going to set the mass to 5000. Again, these are just all settings I've used that worked. And I'm going to put restitution down to zero. So you can also do this through the uh, spreadsheet. So if you go up to the fracture and then spreadsheet, you can change the mass in here and change a lot of other settings as well. Um, but since the uh, introduction of being able to select multiple objects in the object list and then changing the mass here and it propagate down to all of the others, I've just used it through here as opposed to going into the spreadsheet that often. Um, there are other reasons why you would use a spreadsheet which we should be covering in a future tutorial. Okay, so back onto the simulation. So we need to now add in the meteorite. So go in there and connect selected. So it should now be added in. And I need to up the mass on this to 7,500 and drop down the restitution to zero as well. I also am going to add in the road fracturing helper. And all this is, is this is this turn off so that it doesn't go. It's basically a, uh, a sphere that rises. It's, it'll become self-explanatory once um, I start fracturing the road. It's just a way to help me get the look I'm after. So I'm going to add the sphere to fracture and default settings fine just put restitution down to zero um, okay so let's just hit play and see what we have I need to need to make sure I turn on the active again and rewind to the beginning and if we hit play nothing happens. So now we need to set up a, uh, so we need to set up some events basically. So thank you for watching part one in this series of tutorials. Part two will be covering the paint and localized fracturing as well as the events tab. Hope you've enjoyed watching the tutorial and you can download a trial copy of Fracture Effects at www.fracture-effects.com.